Welcome to Geneva for WISIS Forum 2019, where we celebrate the 10-year anniversary of the event. And I'm delighted to be joined by Nitya Kemka, affiliate lecturer at Cambridge University. Nitya, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, Charlotte. And Nitya, we spoke to you last year, didn't we? And you're yes. back this year to uh, conduct a workshop on how to use innovation in technology to deliver the SDGs in South Asia. So tell us what the session is all about. So the session, Charlotte, is called Innovations in Bottom-Up Innovations in Technology uh, to Achieve the SDGs, Ideas from South Asia. And it basically looks at how innovations can impact uh, achieving the 2030 agenda. Uh, so it looks at a whole range of issues around uh, SDGs and looks at how we can leverage technology in order to strengthen implementation. It also looks at the risks, the challenges and the opportunities in achieving the SDGs, particularly with respect to equity and leaving nobody behind. And uh, finally, it examines a whole range of stakeholder perspectives. So we have government perspectives, we have the uh, international development partners, the United Nations, the WHO, uh, UNITA, United Nations Office for Project Services, the Defeat NCD Partnership, as well as NGOs and the private sector. So it looks at the whole gamut of stakeholders to see how we can move the needle on SDGs. It's a pretty broad topic, isn't it? So where do you start exactly? Well, it is a very broad, uh, broad topic, but the, but the premise is I think South Asia really has the potential of riding on the wave of the fourth industrial revolution with its young population well connected to global technological developments and its large labor force. Um, and I think the important thing to remember is in the next five years, more people in Asia will be connected to the Internet than has ever been the case in the last 30 years. Uh, so this obviously has huge uh, ramifications in terms of the social, the economic, and the political. And increasingly, people will begin to solve their challenges using e-government apps, voter ID registration, open education platforms, and health-seeking tabs. Uh, but at the same time, I think that new challenges will emerge. And what are some of these challenges? There will be a huge surge in demand for services, so governments will obviously face that. Uh, additionally, there will be disruptions in innovations. New ways of being and doing will disrupt old ways. And uh, finally, there may be an increase in conflict. So uh, clearly, we have to, uh, to examine all of these challenges as we look ahead in embarking upon the 2030 agenda. So ethical considerations are still very important and very much top of the agenda, aren't they? So this is an unprecedented moment in history as we begin to achieve the SDG agenda. Uh, and obviously there are lots of ethical implications that we have to consider, particularly issues of locality, issues of sustainability, and local values. So it's realigning values with that of uh, serving the last mile, and that's very critical when we come look at technology, uh, technologies in order to achieve the SDGs. And amongst all the technologies we are discussing here at WISIS Forum 2019, which ones do you think have the most potential to create a fair information society? I mean, we're talking about 5G, AI, blockchain. Um, there's so much out there. W which ones do you think have the most potential? Well, uh, Charlotte, you mentioned all of them. They're very critical. You know, you, people talk about the Internet of Things and how that's going to change, uh, change the way de service delivery is impacted. Uh, but I think uh, most importantly, uh, we need to talk about the innovation environment around a lot of this, the technology. So, for instance, uh, governments have to uh, work in a very agile way in order to calibrate and recalibrate their policies around evolving technology. There needs to be a very close working relationship between government on the one hand that enables technology policy, the private sector that builds this technology, as well as uh, the academia and academic institutions that actually nourish and nurture this technology. So there needs to be a three-way sort of uh, three-way working mechanism around uh, around pol technology policy. Secondly, I think it's very important to build trust in technology and to be a first mover. So oftentimes countries wait for um, other people to move ahead uh, to implement technologies, but countries really need to seize the moment. Governments need to seize the moment in order to roll out technology. Um, in fact, uh, the, the World Economic Forum in their latest Future of Jobs report, uh, uh, they mentioned that there is a net positive job growth uh, across uh, all sectors uh, by 2022 
by adopting artificial intelligence. So governments really need to get on the bandwagon. And finally, I think it's very important for governments to uh, invest in the future, Charlotte. And I think that the fourth industrial revolution really provides South Asia with an opportunity to transition from a low value added service economy to a high innovation driven system. Um, and I think uh, countries need to invest a larger percentage, a larger share of their GDP back into research and development. And we've seen this time and time again. We've seen this in China, with the government investing in artificial intelligence, in Switzerland, closer to home with, uh, with health technology, uh, as well as in Israel with defense. So I think plowing back uh, part of the GDP into uh, R&D is very important. And there have been huge success stories even from South Asia. For instance, uh, the med tech uh, clusters around Andhra Pradesh and India have done a huge deal in order to increase uh, the, the, the presence and, uh, and, and jobs in the pharmaceutical industry. So clearly a, lot, a long way to go, but a lot has also been done. Okay, Nitya, thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Charlotte. Thank you.